We are live. This is uh, going really great. Um, just waiting on Facebook to do a few things for us here in the background. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the gentleman, you the ladies, and y'all do look absolutely amazing. Uh, good morning, great morning, one day after uh, Christmas, Jesus' birthday, and I want to welcome everybody to the Dr. Larry White Senior Show, and I'm going to get right to it. We have some amazing guests. We've been profiling them all week, um, and I'm just going to get right on to it because we have a lot to get through for the show today. The first I want to, uh, I'm not sure how y'all are viewing this, but on my top left, I have Sylvia Kuntz to my top left, and on my uh, bottom left, I have Sherry DeVoe Denard. Did I uh, pronounce that correct, Sherry? Oh, that's pretty close. <laughs> Go ahead and correct me. How did I? Sherry DeVos Denard. Sherry DeVos Denard. Yeah. Got it. But we're going to go with Sherry for the rest of the show, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and we have um, precious killer pitch master Williams in the building, bottom right, out of New York. So listen, um, let's just get right to it. I want to go to the questions shortly, but Sylvia, for about 30 seconds, could you just tell people, Sylvia Coons, tell us who you are and what you do for a living. I am Sylvia Kuntz. I am the CEO and founder of Sylvia Kuntz Inspires, Jace Management Consultants, which deal with healthcare management, which is the coding and um, billing side that actually educate providers on communication, coding and billing, help them know how to communicate with their providers as well as with their staff, and anything that helps you educate, elevate, inspire and know what to do in your day-to-day -day activities. Hey man, I appreciate that. Hey, look, she got the snaps going. Get um, the snaps. I guess I guess that's why when I had that tooth surgery a couple of weeks ago, Sylvia, you got on me about shaving shaving when my face was numb with that medical background you got there. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, let's go over to uh Precious Williams. Precious, tell us a little bit about you and who you are in about 30 seconds or so. Okay, so let's face it, most entrepreneurs and small business owners struggle with how to get media attention for their business. They struggle with how to attract their ideal clients and customers to them. And they also struggle with, you know, how to get investors really interested in what it is that they're doing and actually handing them a check for their, for, 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 to be a part of their company. So what I do is I am the killer pitch master. And as the killer pitch master, I create killer elevator pitches, media pitches, investor pitches, and speaker pitches for entrepreneurs who are ready to step up to the next level. So if you've been struggling with all of those things from media attention, investor, um, not getting enough investor interest, if you aren't getting speaking engagements and you are a professional, you need to seek me out. My company is Perfect Pitches by Precious, where I teach the art and the science and the most killer elevator pitches. And as someone who's been on everything from Shark Tank to Forbes magazine, uh, I do definitely know what it is that I'm doing. And I'm here and I'm pleased to help you all today. Precious, you, you know, you're absolutely a phenomenal uh, person, um, and I pray that Sylvia <clears throat> and Sherry will connect with you on Facebook, as the three of you should do that um, as a part of it. All right, uh, Sherry, uh, just recently connected with you on Facebook. Um, I was just down in Atlanta for a book signing, and somehow through the networks and channels, your name came up. I put you in a group today down there in Atlanta. Thank you for uh, accepting. So, Sherry, who are you, and what do you do for a living? Well, first of all, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I just think it's a blessing to <laughs> start there. So my name is Sherry DeVos Denard, as you mentioned earlier, and I'm the CEO and owner of um, Sherry DeVos Denard State Farm Agency here in McDonough, Georgia. Um, I started my agency here just in June of this year. So, um, you know, excited to be here among the, the McDonough community and Atlanta community. And, uh, you know, my mission statement is, you know, just clear um, to educate the, uh, the public at large about it, uh, insurance, uh, financial services, and, you know, what value it is to their families and how we can best protect families and, um, you know, how we can actually build generational wealth um, by, by using life insurance. So that's just a small 30 second, but that, you know, that's a lifetime. <laughs> I can probably write a book to more to come. You know what, um, as we get ready to go into the questions, I'm so proud of you all. Um, I will never have two or three people on the show that do the same thing. So for the listening audience, please listen to these golden nuggets. It will, it's recorded, you'll get it again. But let me tell you, these, these are some 
awesome, awesome people. So we're going to start up off with um, Sylvia Kuntz here. As with many authors, there is a moment or reason that causes them to write a book. What was your inspiration mm -hmm. for a daily dose? In essence, who are you writing to? Um, there was a moment that medication outweighed meditation. So this book inspired me because I needed the balance of it. And it started in my mindset and I wanted to, I wanted and needed the meditation to outweigh my medication. So therefore this is how a daily dose came about because I wanted more doses of meditation than medication. And I realized that I did not want people as well as myself, I had to start in my mindset and know that I wanted to know that, and there are people now, so that I don't want people to hear this and say, oh, so you don't want medication because medical science will tell you to grab a pill first. But I realized that I needed meditation before I needed meditation, medication. And that is something that is so vital that if you don't seek meditation first, uh -huh. your meditation will now outweigh your medication. So now this little book, which has little, little, just little blurbs of things that I grab daily that are so key now to me, that is so vital to me, that now I'm going to grab my meditation before I'm grab my meditation, my medication. And I'm not saying that you might not still need your medication until God is going to heal you. But now I'm going to participate in my healing until I get to the place where God needs me to be. That's Sylvia, you, 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 speak so profoundly, you speak so profoundly about that because I've been looking at um, holistic treatment. I've had some mm -hmm. health issues as I turned 40. And so I really want to get uh, talk to you a little bit more about that. Hopefully I'll see you Saturday at Todd, you know, somewhere, surprise party, mm -hmm. I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'll see you somewhere and I get your copy and um, I'll get your copy as well uh, this week. Uh, Precious, I know we've been going back and forth. <laughs> so here we, I'm sorry about that, sis. Um, I'm going to go with two questions with you, Sherry. Number one, how did you get into the insurance business and what's the difference between whole life and term? Absolutely. So my journey started actually um, as a college student and um, at Albany State College. And I actually was uh, able to secure an internship with State Farm in the claims department many moons ago, I like to say. <laughs> Uh, but like, you know, took me down a different path and, uh, you know, I, I started down a whole corporate path in pharmaceutical industry and various roles and responsibilities. So back in 2016, I was um, approached by a State Farm uh, recruiter and, um, and I thought, you know, why not? This is an ex excellent opportunity in my career. Um, I, it's, it's familiar to me and, um, and I love helping people. I really, I really love helping people. And this is a very unique position whereby, you know, you have a, a broader reach and opportunity to, um, to influence. And if I can reach back in any, you know, in that capacity and just give back in a way that I couldn't give back before, just sitting behind a cube in corporate America, um, I'm just happy to be able to do so and, and educate the, um, the public at large, particularly our, our culture. And that's a good segue into life insurance. And I think the question was, what's the difference between whole life and term? I'm very passionate about you know, life insurance. And, and as you know, State Farm offers a plethora of products and services, um, but life insurance is very uh, close to my heart because I just feel like you know, people just don't really value uh, life insurance because you know, it has living benefits as well as death benefits. And what it can do for your family is just astronomical. I mean, it's, it's a tax-free gift, if you will. It's a love gift. Um, and, you know, and I always say this, you know, there are laws in place to protect us, you know, for our, you know, for our auto, you know, the lien holder is going to force you to basically have <laughs> insurance for your automobile. And, you know, your, your mortgage company is going to make you have insurance for the home. There's nothing, nothing uh, making you protect your family. And I just like to make sure that I have a, 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 a I guess a, a holistic conversation when I'm talking to my customers to make sure they understand why it's important that you leave that legacy in place. So the difference between whole life and term. Um, whole life, I want you guys to think about whole life is like owning a home, right? 
you're going to own this policy. You can either do it in 10, 20 years or for the rest of your life and it endows at age 100, right? But you never have to revisit having uh, uh, insur insurability. You're basically securing your insurability at a point in your life where you're young, hopefully you're young and you're healthy, it's, it's cheap. And so the premium will never change. The face value will never change. But the good news there is going to appreciate in value because of dividends, right? So that's that wealth and generational wealth I was talking about. And so at, at some point in your life, when it accumulates cash value, you can actually you know, borrow against something that's yours. And you don't have to worry about going to the bank to get a credit, credit check. So I love that. And then for a term life, think of it like renting something, right? It's a great product, by the way. Think about when you're, when you're in the prime of your life and you have a home, you have children in college and things like that. God forbid something happens during that period of time. Term life is like that umbrella of protection. You can get this big policy for usually a very small price, but it, 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 can, it can really benefit your family if something, God forbid, happens unexpectedly and you're young and, and you, you leave your family that gift. They don't have to worry about grieving you now. I mean, they're going to grieve you, of course, but they don't have to also worry about how to take care of your final expenses and how they're going to send their kids to college and, you know, pay the mortgage and all those things that you leave behind. So, so it's very important that, you know, families understand why that's very important to put in place. Sherry, thank you so much. I do want to get some more information about um, those two. I, I, I kind of grasped everything you were saying, because especially in the African-American community, we we're, we're, we're kind of known to leave some bills behind with our family members and trying to figure out how to uh, bury somebody. So um, great, great, great information. So thank you so much. You're All right, over to you, Precious. Uh, what inspired hey, you to hey. write? Yes, yes, yes. I know we get ready to get some snaps going here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what inspired you to write your exciting new book, uh, Bad Bitches and Power Pitches? And how long did it take uh, you to write it, in, you know, in, in talking about this part. book right here, Bad Bitches and Power Bitches. Yeah, that, that one right there. <laughs> so, my, would you say? I'll be ordering my copy today. Please do, darling. You're going to love this. So, what inspired me to write Bad Bitches and Power Pitches is three. I won my last elevator pitch comp, business, national business elevator pitch competition in 2013, and that was the Black Enterprise Elevator Pitch Competition, chosen the, their national champion for 2013. And I remember after all the interviews and everything that was done, there was an interviewer who said to me, man, you're a bad bitch. And I, it, it startled me for a second because I was like, I, I need to understand the context. And when I thought about it, I said, hmm. And then as I started speaking more and more as an international professional speaker, people would say it all the time. And I had thought about writing this book for three years before I wrote it this year, three years, because I kept thinking of the title, Bad Bitches and Power Bitches. And you know that it can be controversial. Some people can think it's crass. And I was like, but it's not. It's really about teaching you how to pitch yourself and walk into the space like you own it. And for a lot of women, we struggle with thinking we have to be perfect and we have to look a certain way, talk a certain way, act a certain way. I was a pitch master at 327 pounds. So you can imagine that people would look at me and say, oh, she's going to talk about food. She's, she's a fat girl. She's going to talk about food. But I was really talking about plus size lingerie for full figure divas and plus size fashionistas. And one of the things that I learned is that how do you win an unwinnable war? You change the language and you'll change the game. So when I started talking about, when people talk about plus size women, I noticed how the conversation would change. But when I said full figure divas and plus size fashionistas, what? What? <laughs> women would go wild when they heard my pitches. And they were like, I am a full figure diva. I am a plus size. I'm not just a plus size woman. I'm more than that. I'm the Beyonce. I'm not Kelly and Michelle. And I was like, that's what I mean by being a bad bitch with a power pitch. You don't have to be perfect, but you do have to know out of the seven branding bitches, this is a book about branding in your pitching game. The seven branding bitches, the unstoppable bitch, the funny bitch, the power bitch, the, uh, the numbers bitch, the, the mysterious bitch. So there's seven different bitches in here that when you, find, when you actually figure out their characteristics and what makes them who they are, you can start to write the pitch based on which of the women that you are most like. So I'm most like the unstoppable bitch because no matter what you do to me, 
I'm still gonna rise like the phoenix, no matter what. I've been through homelessness, abuse, torture, abandonment, rejection, been through all of it, and I'm still standing, thriving today. And I'm also <laughs> the flawed bitch because every, every when people used to see me, they always used to talk about all the things that I wasn't, and I wanted to talk about all the things that I was. So I may not be the thin one. I may not be, I may not be certain things, but what I bring to the table is something that you need to hear about. So it took me two and a half months to write this book and to, you know, debut at number one on Amazon was amazing. And I can't believe it took me two and a half months, but that's how Bad Bitches and Power Pitches came about. I'm going to stick with you for a moment here, Precious, and congratulations, um, mm -hmm. you know, being transparent, me and Sylvia, we talk about it. Um, it's, you know, I, I can really relate to a lot of your, 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 your stories and things that you said, but I'm really impressed with your past, you know, everything that you've done. This one, I'm going to skip to question number four for you. How did you feel when Forbes magazine reviewed your new book and what is expected? Were you surprised by the response when they, you know, came at you like that, Forbes? I was, I was. First of all, I thought the title of the book would be something that major, uh, major magazines wouldn't take to, and I was wrong. In fact, uh, the woman who wrote the article, uh, Jerry, she reached out to me and she said, Precious, I'd like to review your book. And I'm like, you work at Forbes? And she said, yeah, I'd like to review your book. And I was like, She's like, I'm not telling you if I'm going to like it or not. I'm not going to tell you if it's going to be great or not. I just want to review your book. And I think that the Forbes name behind you, one way or the other, people are going to be excited about your book. And so I thought it would come out later, much later. And when it came out, I literally cried. Like I'm emotional about it now because so many of us write books and our own mothers won't buy it. Our family won't buy it. The friends won't buy it. That wasn't what happened in my case. It started selling like hotcakes in pre-order. And then for Forbes to get behind it, that's what allowed um, other magazines like Black Enterprise and everything else to get behind it. And then Forbes magazine came to me and said, we have a publishing arm. We'd like to publish your next three books. And I was like, I, I, I can't. Um, so the response was overwhelming. And the guy's honest truth is as much as an unstoppable bitch as I am, there are things that still take my breath away. And I just want to share with all the women and men listening is when you put yourself out there unapologetically, you'll be amazed at what comes back to you. Mm -hmm. And God gave me the inspiration for writing this book. He really, really did. And so um, Sylvia, I, I totally feel what you're saying, walking in your purpose and really being divinely inspired. So that was a divine, divinely inspired uh, connection, and I'm so grateful for it. Um, Precious, again, I want to thank you. Um, we're not done, but I just want to thank you for, um, you know, I've been watching you. I tell uh, Sylvia all the time, I say, she the Cheryl Wood up there in New York, and uh, we'll get you down here. <laughs> I love Cheryl Wood. <laughs> yes, yes. We'll have to get you down here. Um, there's a lot going on, but um, this is going well. I appreciate everybody, and uh, I see I see the Facebook. If, if you can, you can share it out. But a lot of my uh, network, they're looking at this they're like, wow, this is, you know, I don't think this has ever been done where you could get these, the, this many powerhouse uh, women entrepreneurs uh, in, you know, one setting. So I'm really excited. And believe it or not, as, as Sylvia know, and, and, and you'll see Sherry and Precious, I've been knowing she, Precious um, virtually for about two years. Yes. Um, <laughs> I just met Sylvia, but I'm pretty smooth for the most part. But I'm a little nervous today. I'm just going to tell you, I'm a little nervous. All right. All right. All right. Coming over to you, Sylvia. In today's world, how do you feel your book uh, could benefit one's life? And I want you to go to the next one. What is a day in the life of Sylvia like? So two questions for you. Uh, in today's world, how do you feel your book can benefit one's life? And what's the day life, uh, a, a day in the life of Sylvia like? Okay, so the first question, um, I will answer that and say that um, life happens, but God is still good. And I'll say Amen. that again, that life <clears throat> happens, but God is still good. So Amen. the book intent is to reassure and bring refuge and to bring optimism. But just like the two ladies just said that if you don't have those things, then you cannot be able to know about 
term and 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 insurance and to know about having the market uh, pitches and all those things together. So if if you don't have the balance of of having the reassurance and the refuge and the optimism, then you can't know about having the assurance and insurance and and the market in places. So you have to have all these things together. And just to let you know, this was not a coincidence that you put us here together because without all these things to, to as the thread, then you can't have one without the other. And that's what people fail to realize is that you try to take one without the other, and then you will be isolated because people are trying to do all these things about, without, about themselves. And that's the problem because this person is out here doing their thing and this person is doing these things. And if we come together, we will be, I'm telling you, a huge masterpiece. With that being said, a day in the life of me, um, basically I work hard, my mantra, I work hard and I play hard. And that is, I've always taught my kids that if you do not work hard, don't expect, don't, don't expect anything. Don't expect people to give you anything. Um, and that is just that if you do not work hard, the, the ladder would not come. And here lately, I've been working harder than I've been playing. So I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's been um, major. And um, my, my morning, uh, morning mainly is, is meditation, praying, worship. Um, and if I'm chilling, it's normal. Netflix and chill day. If, if I get those moments, it's a Netflix and chill. But that's normally it. Uh, I have not had those moments here lately because I've been working very, very, very I got one more, very hard. Um, and I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a problem with that because what I've learned from my grandmother, Azalina Barnes, who is dead and gone, people are not gonna give you anything. And I don't have a problem with that. And it's okay. Mm. Sylvia, um, I can definitely see the fruits of your labor. <clears throat> Excuse me, the fruits of your labor. You do work hard. I didn't know you played hard. I, I just see you fasting and praying and speaking and helping the homeless. But it's good to know that you are recharging the batteries. And listen, you know, yesterday was Christmas um, and we're gonna go over to Sherry here, but the, I, you know, I'm just so proud to come out the gate. This is my second show, everybody. Um, I think, for, uh, I know, uh, Sylvia, you saw the first show with um, Stacy Lattisaw and Mark Clark from 96.3, mm -hmm. hit a home run. And then I had to take it down a notch and regroup technology. And the Lord was like, reach out to Sherry, reach out to Precious and, 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 and reach out to Sylvia. And this is a, 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 a Christmas gift prior to 2020 for everybody, okay? Um, I don't know how long I'll be here on this earth, but I try to use my platform to elevate others. I love uh, what you said earlier today, uh, Precious. I was on my first radio show. I couldn't remember the website. I was stumbling and the producer goes, you have 30 seconds to give me your elevator pitch, Larry, round us out. And I had to basically sum up my logo, my website, what I do, my mission statement in 30 seconds. So I could really um, appreciate what you said, Precious, about that 30 second elevator pitch because I, it took me a couple of years, but I can do it in 29 seconds now. Love so, it. <laughs> I can do it, I can do it. Sure. Listen, I wanna move over to Sherry. This is going really great. I really appreciate you all. A couple of questions for you here, Sherry. When is the, the first one I want to ask you, because this one is, I feel is all of them are important, but I want to know this one. When is the best time to seek coverage for insurance? Yeah. You know, I, I like that question a lot because there is no, to me, it's better to be five minutes early than one minute late on insurance. Um, you know, you don't want to wait until you're sick. You don't want to wait until you're old. You don't want to wait until you're, you know, now it's to the point where you really can't even in you know, afford it. So you can get life insurance on a child as young as 14 days old. Um, and my God, why not? Because that is a gift that you're going to be able to hand over to that child when they're, you know, I guess when they're responsible enough to handle it, that is. Um, if you put a whole life policy on a baby and when that baby gets a school age and able to, you know, pay for their semester of a tuition without having to get into debt, that's the gift that keeps giving. You know, so when we're thinking about Christmas and we're thinking about gifts, that's the real gift. Um, because those toys and, and things like that, they're, you know, they're gonna, they're not gonna be playing with them next week, by the way. <laughs> but that's you know, right. 
So to answer your question, when it when it comes to uh, life insurance, you can you know you can you can do it as young as fourteen. So if you have a grandkid, you have a child, um, someone that you love, because again that's a love gift. I would do it while they're small, while they're healthy, while they're young. It's going to be cheap and it's going to last forever. It's a gift that just keeps giving. Um, as far as auto insurance, of course, you need to be of age to have a driver's license. So that's a no brainer. And again, I won't go through all the products, but, you know, have a conversation, you know, with your local agent. Um, hopefully that's me if you're here in Georgia. And I'm happy to tell you uh, even more about age limitations and limits of liability and everything. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'm very, very passionate about life insurance. So I, I led with that conversation. Well, look, I'm going to stay here with you. We've got one more question for you. Then as Sylvia probably is prepared, I'm going to ask y'all one more question that you all have given me. Then I'm going to switch it up and ask you some questions. Just one or two that, that may, that I'm going to try to pull some more things out of you. <clears throat> Sticking with you, Sherry, what, what risk exist for auto and homeowners and how uh, do we best protect ourselves? Absolutely. So I'll start with the automobile. Um, in, the, in the state of Georgia, we have limits of liability that are state mandated, for example. So in Georgia here is 25, 50, 25. And uh, even before I became an, a full-fledged agent, I don't think I really realized what those numbers mean. And so I'll just give you my, you know, one-on-one, um, I guess, I guess explanation of that <laughs> make it so to not complicate it. So the first number 25, for example, is $25,000. And when you think about liability, I want you to always think about the other guy. Okay. Not you. It's not about you. It is about you if you're at fault. So if you're at fault, the limits of liability that, you know, your company will pay out for the other guy's injuries. So 25 is the first number, right? So it's 25,000 and that's bodily injury. Um, for one person, uh, so say for example, you have an accident, if you're at fault, the other guy has injuries that are above $25,000, the company will pay that 25 and the rest is on you. And yes, they can come after you for the, for the difference. The $50,000 is per occurrence. So I don't care how many people are in that automobile, it's only gonna pay out $50,000 and everything else after that belongs to you. And 20, the last $25,000 is for property damage. So here in Atlanta, I don't know, I think they're giving away Maserati or something. Uh, everybody's driving you know, a lot of car down here. So, you know, God forbid if you hit one of those nice luxury cars here in Atlanta and you, you have state minimums uh, and it, it exceeds $25,000, they can sue you for the balance. So um, I like to take time to really explain those coverages because it's important. Um, if, you, if you're underinsured, and I don't know if you guys been to Atlanta. Well, you've been to Atlanta recently. Almost every other billboard is a, a lawyer. There's a reason for that. <laughs> well, I went to school in Atlanta, so yes, I yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, they got more billboards than you know anybody else here. Uh, you know, so because people are litigation happy, unfortunately. So you just need to be aware of those risks that that are that are existing out here in these streets and you know, how, where, where you are in that risk. So if you're out here and you're just, you know, if you're working with state minimums, be aware of what that means. So, you know, have a conversation and, you know, go back to your agent and see if you can increase those risks, those, those limits of liability so that you don't expose yourself. Um, and again, that's just, just to protect your assets. And we also have things like PLUP, um, you know, which is a personal liability umbrella policy. Um, Sherry, we lost your video. Oh, I see my battery just went light on me. So I'll keep talking while I figure out how to get that to come back up. But, you know, just real quick on the homeowners, it's the same concept. You want to make sure that you understand what, you know, what liability limits are in that policy to make sure if there's something that happens in your home or at your house that, you know, you don't get sued and it goes beyond those limits. So I would recommend something, you know, north of $300,000 at the minimum. But again, you know, that depends on your, your personal situation. Okay. Well, listen, right. thank you. Um, we're gonna come back to you. Let me know when you um, get your power squared away. And oh, yeah. We'll bring you back on, okay? Okay. All righty. Okay, Precious, let's go over to you, Precious, here. Um, you work with a lot of companies and corporations as a corporate trainer and speaker. 
who are some of your clients and why do they work with you especially? So that's a, that's a great question. Some of, the, some of my clients include Microsoft, uh, eBay, Google, uh, Goldman Sachs. I, this year was so incredible. Morgan Stanley. Can I just take a, can I just be the Uber driver one day? I was going to say like, wait a minute, stop. Hold up. You, you and need listen. to take it back? <laughs> well, you know, honestly, let me tell you something. And, and I think, you know, people who know me know this. Uh, I walked out of a life transformation program in September of 2018. So for two years, I was off the grid. I was getting my life back together after, you know, you know, have, having done Shark Tank and all those amazing different shows that I did. Um, I wasn't happy. I was becoming a severe alcoholic and I, you know, eventually squandered all my money because, hey, you know, when you when you don't value your own life, you do a lot of strange things, like st stuff that I'm like looking back, like I must have been out of my mind. So to come out of a program in 2018, not a rehab, but a life transformation program where there was no television, no cell phones, no this, you were really off the grid, getting clear with God about aligning with the purpose that he has for you, has for me. I walked out of that program with clients, individual clients, right? Mm -hmm. And what I started doing, uh, what I started doing it this year, January, is I made a decision to that I was going to have the audacity to ask for what it is that I want because I had done so much in my prior life. People thought it was so easy for me to step back in. And I'm like, no, when you're no longer successful, people don't rock with you the same way. I promise you they don't. <laughs> so I had to go out there and beat the pavement and showcase why I'm still the best in the world at what I did. And I'm probably better because I'm not under the influence of anything other than God. Now I, I all I do is drink water. That's all I do. So when I started posting on, on different things and, and really giving value to people and really showcasing, this is what God can do. If he can make me walk out of a program with clients who did not know I was sitting in a program, that is crazy to me. And then for bigger, I spoke at the Women of Color and Capital Conference, which was at NYU. I was on the, the, the six-figure women panel. Yeah, you can walk out of a program and make it six figures. How, how does that happen, right? So I remember when I got off the stage, all these women bum rushed me. And then there was uh, three executives from Microsoft who walked up to me and were like, Look, would you like to speak at our conference? Would you like to train at our hackathons? Would you like to do this? Goldman Sachs, I literally asked the, um, the, the president of the Goldman Sachs Foundation, could I be a part of her, be a part of the 10,000 small, 10,000, 10,000 small business program. Could I be a teacher and a trainer? I had the audacity to ask for that. And then other companies walked up to me that day, venture capital companies. And, and they were like, you are really dynamic as a speaker. And I've never heard anybody speak like you. And I said, well, thank you, because I never got those kind of compliments until I walked out of that program and figured out who I really was. And so the reason why the companies are coming to me now is because I'm speaking on bigger and bigger platforms forms and I'm not submitting proposals. I'm not just randomly submitting proposals and hoping they're actually coming to me. And I, I, I only attribute that to God and that they see the light in me and they actually see results with me. So training sales teams, uh, teaching people how to get paid speaking engagements, walking in my gift, walking in my light, you know, and again, when Forbes did what they did, like, this is incredible. Upscale Magazine, Heart and Soul Magazine, Black and Red, like all of these things I never thought. When I sat in that program for almost two years, I literally never thought I would have the opportunity to get on stage again. I never thought that. I was just like, well, I guess I got to get a job and all sorts of things. And that's not what happened. God said, no to a job. Yes to what I'm putting you on this earth to do. You will not allow yourself to get caught up in things that don't matter. Toxic people, toxic relationships, um, you know, uh, alcohol, any of that anymore. I've now given you a second chance and I need you to work this second chance like you've never worked before. So that's how that happened. And I'm so grateful to God every day. So I can spend a Christmas alone just really sitting and listening to what he's trying to tell me and having a back and forth conversation, but he taught me to have audacity. And if you have the audacity to ask for things, some people are gonna tell you no, and some people are gonna be like, wow, no one's ever asked in that way and you already come fully formed. Let's work together. Precious, I wanna thank you so much for that. Um, we have about, <clears throat> excuse me, we have about 11 minutes left. The show is 45 minutes and I gotta tell you, Without a commercial break, I appreciate it because y'all are giving me some great stuff, some inspiration. I've been wanting to say this for 30 minutes because we've got 
Sherry back. So welcome back to the show, uh, Sherry. Hey! Sherry, I was admiring your um, your paint in the back. Uh, we both have similar uh, color background. Um, my wife is a Delta uh, Spelman grad. So am I, I. So am I. I know. I know. No, I know, man, right? Kappa. It's so I, I I gave her this office like ten years ago. I painted it, you know, Delta color, you know, that cardinal. And so I was Sherry admiring your crimson. Um, Yes, I was admiring that color back there because we kind of got the same uh, color background. But I just wanted to shout that out uh, and welcome back to the show, Sherry. Okay, uh, we th these last ten minutes we're gonna really hit it. We get ready. I'm getting ready to hit you in the gut a little bit. So we're gonna go over to Sylvia here. Sylvia, two questions for you. We all have moments that cause us to question the journey and process. What have been some of yours, and how did you get through it? Let me answer it this way. My, my pastor always says, don't let what you do understand affect what you don't understand. So when I have those moments, I lean on <laughs> Did what you see I Precious do. fall the back? I'm just, <laughs> I had to fall back. So when I have those moments, I lean on what I do understand. And Pastor, you hear me saying Pastor Larry, Dr. Larry, you will, you will recall um, the other week when I spoke um, at the tour drive that I said that when you fail, fail fast. Don't waddle in it. Don't stay, don't cry past Tuesday. And one of, one of my quotes that I love is failure is the condiment to success. So you're going to have to get this in your, in your belt and just deal with it. And you don't like it. You won't like it, but it will make you. It will make, I think about Michael Jordan and when he got cut and people said he was not going to be anybody, look at who he is today. And we don't like failure. It, I mean, it makes us cry, but the pain of what it is, it will make you. And that's the thing that I'm learning each day. And I was trying not to cry precious when you were talking, but let me tell you something, the things that I have gone through, it has cost me. And that was another question that I had. It, the yes has cost me, but it has definitely made me. And my yes is not your yes, but one of the things that I have learned is that the yes has made me who I am and the failure has made me who I am and nobody can't take it. Nobody can't take it away. Nobody can't deter, deter me. Nobody can't make me detour. No distraction can't turn me back. And I know that I know. Hear me when I know for, without a shadow of a doubt that I am better because of what I have gone through. And I am so glad that that when he gave me a no, I didn't like it, but I'm glad nope. for the no. I'm glad he put an exclamation point at the, behind the no, because now that no has given, given me to, to surrender to a yes for him. So now I can tell somebody that don't go this way because it's a huge pothole here. Listen to me, listen to me carefully. And now they can say, thank you. And they can come back and say, you know what? I'm glad that you told me to go this road and not to go this way. And, and what I'm learning now more and more each day is that when I have these people that, um, that come in my life, I don't discount it. And, and I know now that they are not coincidence. I know that he put, he's putting them in my life so that I can now gain more knowledge and then give more knowledge. But I also know that who to give the wisdom and knowledge to because it will cost you and you got to know who's worth the price to pay. Well, um, I'm sorry. Sil Sylvia, you always seem to drop the mic. Um, I thought you was gonna go with, um, uh, is that all you got? But uh, <laughs> you know, they know about that next time. One more question, Sylvia, before we go and find out what y'all got coming up. Uh, what's next for you? Uh, for the near and distant future, Sylvia Coons. Um, um, let me see. I know I have the Black History um, program coming up in February um, in Cambridge, Maryland. Um, and I just like to leave one of the things that, as I said um, in back in December, the, the points that I always like to make is elevate, eliminate, and insulate. Um, and if you're wondering what that is, is as God is elevating you, he's going to al allow you to eliminate some things and then he's going to allow you to insulate some things. So elevate, 
because he's taking you to a higher place and then he wants you to eliminate because there, there are things and people that cannot go with you. And then when you eliminate, he wants you to insulate. As you said, on Precious, yesterday, it's nothing wrong with having the quiet moments to hear your heartbeat because it's necessary. So as he elevates you, because there are promotions that are coming that only you are going to be able to get and know that. Then also he's going to eliminate people that cannot go with you because they are toxic, they're parasitic, and when you're in parasitic water, it will cause you to die and become stagnant. And then also he's going to insulate you because there are people that cannot go and he wants you to guard the place that he's taking you. Amen. Amen. Another, another drop the mic moment there, Sylvia Coons and I. Definitely. Really, absolutely. Wow. Sylvia, we're going to come back to you to um, round us out with your website and how they can buy your book. Sherry, let's move over to you. Um, we have an atmospheric question for you. It was not on your list. But just uh, talk to us a little bit about, uh, uh, and we have just a few more moments and we have to round it out with Precious as well. Just tell us a little bit about what inspired you to start your business, Sherry? And what are some opt obstacles that you run into and how did you overcome them to stay successful as you are today? So I was inspired to start my business. Um, this, I started, I think, independently. I not think, I was doing it independently back in 2016. And while I was seeing, you know, still had my corporate handcuffs on or my golden handcuffs, right? And, um, and I wasn't making a lot of money doing it, but I really loved how I felt after I had a conversation with someone and I left them in a better position than when I found them. And so after that, I decided to just, you know, just walk in faith and uh, follow what God was telling me to do. And, uh, and so here I am. So I opened my business back in June, like I said, and I walked away from my job back in January. So I had some training in between there. Have not regretted it. It is definitely a grind, but it's a different grind because it's different when you're grinding for yourself versus somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. So for that reason, um, and in the type of business that I do, the opportunity to speak to people on a day-to-day -day basis and help them and also, you know, get involved in the community in a way that I couldn't get involved before. I mean, I just, I can't even tell you how that feels. So for me, it's bigger than just a, a, a job or a grind. It is definitely something that's meaningful for me. I really love helping people. And so I, yeah, that's why I'm here today. Sherry, thank you so much. And, and last question for you to, uh, today, Sherry, before we go over to Precious and Sylvia, leave us with some contact information. If folks want to um, contact you to seek out insurance and financial literacy, leave us with a website, an email, a phone number. Absolutely. So you can reach me. Um, well, the phone number is easy, 678-782-3005. That's the office number. Um, you can hit us up on the website, and that is... Uh, www.sddinsurance.com um, or you can send me an email and that's sherry at sddinsurance.com here at State Farm. Sherry, I want to thank you all. Uh, we, we've got a few moments left. Sherry, I want to thank you for giving some great golden nuggets um, before we go into the new year. You were phenomenal today. You just hold tight just a little bit so we I can do some uh, salutations at the end. But let's move over to you, uh, Precious. Last couple of questions here. Uh, what are some new exciting things that you got happening and what upcoming speaking engagements do you have? So I have several exciting things happening in 2020. Number one, I am starting a new webinar series called Securing Your Bag, Your Speaking Bag in 2020 and bag meaning your big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, so what is it that you want to do? <laughs> or what do you want to be speaking at? what we're going to do is put together a plan and it's during a four part webinar series where I'm going over, you know, what is your goal, how to get there, the steps, the speaking pitch that you need, how to attract conference organizers and event planners to you. So this actually happens. It's not a pipe dream. It's not something you've been telling your friends for the last five years, you're going to do a TED talk and it's not happening because you haven't done something about it. We're going to secure your speaking bag in 2020. And that starts January 3rd. We're also starting the bad bitches and power pitches live events. And that starts in the second quarter of uh, next year here in New York City and in Atlanta and I want to have a third place so it might be like Texas or something like that. Um, I have speaking engagements that take me from Halifax, Nova Scotia again to Barbados to the Bahamas 
to Atlanta. I've been in Atlanta twice, uh, Sherry. Uh, I'll be there from the 8th to the 13th. And I'll be speaking at Spelman College from the 24th to the 26th on branding and pitching. Uh, and, and so I will be speaking at in LA at the, uh, why did it just leave my mind? So I'll be in LA for six days speaking at uh, the, I cannot think of the name of it, but I'll, I'll come back. So you know how you have it in your mind? You're like, I just bought that. So I'm speaking a lot. I'm speaking at St. Mary's University in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'm speaking at the Wow Experience um, in the Bahamas. So I have a lot of speaking engagements and to name them all wouldn't even make sense right now because there's a lot of them. Uh, and uh, my big, hairy, audacious goal, I'm just going to put it out there. It may not happen this year, but I want to speak at the G5 Summit. And I know that sounds really, really crazy because what would a regular speaker who's not a politician do? But that is my big, hairy, audacious goal before my lifetime is over is to speak at the G5 Summit. And so uh, you can get Bad Bitches and Power Pitches on Amazon.com. You can also come to my website, www.perfect pitches by precious.com and if you're looking to learn how to take your speaking uh your speaking uh your speaking skills to the next level if you're learning if you want to learn how to pitch really really well so that people are coming to you and you're attracting your target market and your target clients and stuff like and your ideal clients not the ones who will pay half of what you want but the people who will pay you what you actually are worth check me out at perfect pitches by precious.com and my name is precious williams proud founder and ceo of perfect pitches.com and the author of the number one amazon bestseller bad bitches and power pitches for women entrepreneurs and speakers only here's looking at you i have to um person i have to give you a dab on that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i just you 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 ladies are amazing um uh, we're going to go to Sylvia uh, for her uh, point of con contact for her website and how you can purchase her book, but, and then I'll just close this out. But Sylvia, tell us a website, uh, how we can purchase your book and contact information for you. I know you're available for speaking engagements. And um, I'm just going to task the three of you all to do me one favor in one hour. Sylvia is really amazing about stuff like this. When y'all, are y'all connected on Facebook already? We connected. Share. I know we're not. We need to get on that. Yeah, we, we so, gotta get. I want to text from the three of y'all when y'all are connected on Facebook. <laughs> um, I'm gonna end it out while this book, if right here, this book is number one because I like connecting people together organically. So, um, Sylvia, tell us how folks can contact you, website, phone number, email, speaking engagements, all that good stuff. I am available on www.sylviacoontsinspires.com. My cell is 301-219-0348. All my uh, social media sites are Sylvia Kuntz Inspires. Um, I think that's it. Everything, um, yeah, all of my website information. Uh, my email address is sylviamkuntz at gmail.com. Absolutely. Yep. Listen, Sherry, Precious, Sylvia, say that three times fast, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you all for coming on the show. Um, I brought everything home. So um, we'll have some in-studio things. But now, Precious, I want you to come down. I got to really figure out that schedule. It seems to be really aggressive. Uh, I should have took you up on that last week. So we got to figure it out since you have all these speaking engagements. Sherry, we're going to talk to you offline because we have some mastermind information for you. And preferably, uh, I know a few mastermind members are coming for the March 7th event, and I would love for you to be a speaker there with the Maggianos and um, Cumberland Mall there. But listen, I want to thank you beautiful entrepreneurs for um, uh, being on the show today. I know you all have families and holiday stuff. So thank you so much for being on the show. I would love to have you back. Uh, just a couple of things before we round out the show. Uh, ladies, please share it out. Uh, I'll get you a YouTube link later on so you can uh, get the replay there and share on your websites and things of that nature. Uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I know it's the day, day after Christmas and you could have been anywhere else, but you decided to be here, as your pastor would say. But thank you. I really do appreciate it. A lot of people I can see. I got a lot going on back in the background. My son, shout out to my son, who's coming from Charlotte. He's bringing my granddaughter back. Sherry, you're going to see the granddaughter. And um, Sylvia is a godmother. And we'll have our baby dedication. The fact is, he said, Daddy, I'm so proud of you. I'm listening to your, um, your, 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 your show. 
uh, leaving Charlotte. And I told him traveling mercy. So he, my son told me to tell all y'all, great job. He's uh, just leaving out of Charlotte. Um, Aww. Yes, yes. And your grandbaby is so cute. Yeah. <laughs> pre- hey, look, hey, listen, um, someone asked me yesterday as I get ready to round it out. Thank you so much, everybody. What's the difference in being a grandparent and a parent? I said, whoo, that's an easy one. <laughs> being a grandparent is so much better uh, because you can always give them back in a way, you know what I mean? You ain't got a, you ain't got a full time, but, uh, you know, and, and it's just seeing my son grow up and be a man and, and, you know, seeing him do things. So I appreciate your prayer, Sylvia, Sherry, just met you last week, really. I think we've been connected, but thank you for your prayers. Precious, Bye. thank you for your prayers because, um, this, as an entrepreneur, uh, you know, it's not easy uh, trying to get more clients. And that's why we have this show. So I've got a couple of shameless plugs before we wrap, uh, round it out. January 17th, um, Cocktails and Conversations uh, here in the DMV. Uh, we will be at uh, Blackwall Barn and Lounge, uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Complimentary Valley Parking, complimentary hors d'oeuvres. Register online at VIP Events Concierge forward slash upcoming events. I need you in the building. It's really, really nice. Shout out to the entire DMV Mastermind group, Natalie DeGraff and Reed, who's just doing a lot of work. Happy belated birthday to Tajula Battle Lockhart yesterday and Mary Mitchell and, and all of our great members, Trivia, Lakita. I love all y'all. I love all y'all. And shout out to uh, David Hayden. I spoke to you in uh, Disney World the other day, brother. You smooth. I'm going to introduce you to Sherry so we can run, get our Atlanta group going. January 24th, to deposit your dreams into success will be, will be back in my hometown of Gary, Indiana, Northwest Indiana, Chicago. I need y'all out there, Chicago, uh, deposit your dreams into success. February 1st, I will be with top left Sylvia Kuntz, who will be our keynote speaker for our 11th annual Black History Program in Cambridge, Maryland. And then in March, I will be with Sherry, she don't know it yet, (laughs) uh, in Atlanta. And um, you can register for all those events at www.vipeventsconcierge.com. Listen, I would be remiss if I didn't just say shout out. This book is a year old today. It's a year old. Today. Really? It's wow. a year old today. Yes. And um, it sold over 900 copies. And I want to thank you, Precious, for picking up your copy. And Precious, I'm going to say this to you. Uh, Precious bought my book. She don't normally endorse people's book, but she did a video. And her book wasn't out yet. And um, I'm not, my wife always get on me. She said, Larry, you go tit for tat with people. Meaning like I was going to say, well, Prayerfully, uh, this show will, 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 will be uh, the consolation prize for what you did. But what she did, um, well, first of all, it went to her old address for, the, for number one. Um, she hadn't got her book, but she somehow got it from a neighbor. When she got it, she brought me to tears with the interview she did. And I want to thank you because the book talks about trials and tribulations of, you know, persevering through hard times because God didn't make no junk. All right, you might go through some junk, but you ain't got to stay there. And you said it earlier, Sylvia, in a different way. You said it in a different way. So I just want to thank you all. Um, you can go get the book. It's on my website at vipeventsconcierge.com. It's still there. I, I'll be honest with you, Precious, I don't sell my book on Amazon too much because they take 50% of your proceeds. I get well, mine listen, off. But I, I bought it. No, no. Uh, I, and look, I want to have a conversation with you all because, you know, obviously Amazon can promote you there. But I, I, I teach some marketing classes on how to promote your book. But I, I want everybody to go get Precious' book, go get Sylvia's book. And I guess, Sherry, you're going to be the next one to have to write a book, right? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Anybody got any last remarks, <clears throat> excuse me, last remarks they want to make before we close out the show? Anybody? Yes. Go, well, you go, go ahead. I was just going to say thank you for having me. This has been an absolute pleasure to be a part of this. And yes, I absolutely want to be a part of the masterminds now. Yeah, most definitely. Listen, listen, first of all, Sherry, uh, you felt that spirit from Sylvia, you know, and I I probably didn't do a bad job myself. But listen, (laughs) this is blonde hair, precious, precious. So precious, precious came at me the other day. Um, all right, Dr. White, um, how serious is this mastermind group? And, uh, you know, I like, oh, well, if I'm the chairman, we, we, we really say, hey, 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 listen, Sylvia, I'm going to say this to you. You are so on point, Sylvia. 
I ignored your text message about the link. I said, she won't give me a chance to send it. I know you, I know you wanted it last night. Um, as, as, as one of the, last night was Christmas. Last night was Christmas. Right, 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 right. Precious, let me tell you something. You, you are the only three people that I could get on the show that I know would be on time. <laughs> because people are still, people are still opening up gifts. You know what they get, Sherry. Precious, Silver, you know what they get now. They back at the store taking them gifts back. Yeah. You know what they get. <laughs> <laughs> last, last words from you, uh, Sylvia, and then we'll have uh, Precious take us home. Um, you know I always have a story, right? Okay. <laughs> um, I was reading a book by John O'Leary. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him, called On Fire. And in the book, um, it just made me think about um, that everybody matters. And in one of the excerpts, he talked about how, um, because he actually was on fire, um, had caught, got caught on fire. And he talked about, you know, out of having the doctors, the respiratory therapists, the nurses, and all the people that came in to take care of him. The one that mattered was the janitor. Hmm. The janitor did not come in to clean up the infection. Then he would have died. So I just want to say to that individual today that think that they don't matter, you do matter. Don't ever take what you do in life for granted because he had the doctor, the, the surgeons, he had the nurses, he had the respiratory therapists and all of those that had all the great jobs. If the janitor did not come in on a daily basis to clean up the bacteria infections, he would not be here today. So don't ever take the little things you do in life for granted because you do matter. You do matter. Thank you so much for sharing that, Sylvia. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you offline because that has resonated and happened a couple of times in my life where the custodian, the janitor had to come in and save the day. So thank you for sharing. Precious, you have the last words today. Killer pitch, what you got? So I want to leave everyone with this. Fortune favors the bold. And we hear that a lot, but what does that really mean? I want you all to have audacity this upcoming year. I don't want you to, to wait until next year to go after your dreams. You still have what, six, five, four days, what, five days left in the year. Start setting yourself up for success now. Start writing down your goals. Start you know, making sure they're smart goals. Um, talking it out with your peeps and the people who love you and the people who don't. You know, people always say, you know, hold things back and not everybody needs to know. No, not everybody needs to know, but some people do because you're stepping into a new level. And when I step into a new level, I want you to know, because I'm not dealing with the same things I dealt with before. So get away from toxic people, the people that bring you down, you got to leave them alone because they are standing in the way of your greatness. You have, I don't want to talk about potential because potential, I'm 40, I'm turning 41 on January 22nd and I'm having an event at Microsoft um, to celebrate my birthday and also be considered, I'm considered Let's ride, Let's ride up. Let's ride up. Hey, uh, come on up. hey, hey, y'all can be my guest. Free, catered, everything. I don't pay for nothing. I don't pay for nothing. They doing this for me. So what I'm saying to you, if you want opportunities like that, you got to be willing to put yourself out there in a major way, unapologetically. And fortune favors the bold. And you see with these bold, beautiful women and gentlemen on this show that, that this is what I never knew much about life insurance. I knew much about all types of insurance. And when people talk to me about it, it's usually boring. But I can say, Sherry, we here. Mm -hmm. And then, Sylvia, thank you so much for, yes, you have your drop the mic moments. And I can definitely tell. And if you're part of the mastermind and Sherry's part of the mastermind, then I need to be a part of the mastermind, too. So, ladies, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Dr. Larry White, Sr., Thank you so much for having us on the show and let's all drop the mic and walk away. Yes. Have my Beyonce moment. I, I, I have to. Somebody's getting fired. <laughs> you know what? I do have to say this and I was getting ready to end the broadcast with everybody's hands up like that. Listen, um, these shows, the, you know, I'm just getting started with my show and I was telling Sylvia last week, you know, um, I'll start having commercials and, other guests in 2020, they'll have to pay to get on the show, you, you know, skills to pay the bills. But I want to thank you all for being founding um, guests on the show. You know, I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. If I have three more shows, five more shows, or 30 more shows. I know I had Stacey Ladisall, Mark Clark. I had Sherry DeVos, Denard. Did I get that right? 
That's good enough. <laughs> I'm good enough. Okay. I'm going to get it right, though. And also, um, Precious Williams and Sylvia Coons, the fact of the matter is you all make me better. Uh, I love what you just said, Precious, how you just kind of recapped what you learned from the two ladies today. And we all should be learning from everybody. Mm -hmm. Sylvia knows I say this a lot. And Precious has probably heard it once or twice. But my mom always told me this, and I'll end it with this. Show me the people you hang around with, and I'll tell you a little bit about yourself. Mm -hmm. And today I feel very flanked, very blessed to be flanked with some warriors today that the Lord has put into my life. And I thank you all. God bless you and your families and have a prosperous 2020 power daily dose. All right. All right. Okay. Hey, look, I just, I say this, you know, I was on the show. Sherry, don't feel bad. I was on a show one day and everybody was lifting up their books. And I was like, man, where my book at, right? And, and I got it. I will say this at the time, the Lord was like, I, ain't, I don't really have it in for you right now to write a book. And so it was in God's timing and his alignment. So, you know, if that's what the Lord has for you, because I would just to say this for Sylvia, for, I didn't write a book unless I felt like I could help people. It wasn't about getting a check because Lord knows even those 900 copies I've been able to pay off uh, a few bills and have a little gas money for the kids. So we good to go. But um, I thank you all so much again for tuning in, share the broadcast out. God bless you. And I'll see you soon. God bless you too. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Happy New